Let's get you some more corporate interaction. It was a muted quarter for JSW Energy as coal prices uh, declined and that hit realizations. Although the acquisitions have been contributing very well, Prashant Jain, the joint MD and CEO at JSW Energy joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Prashant, thanks a lot for joining in. So as I said, you know, the... Uh, with the way the coal prices have been moving, there was a bit of pressure on the uh, on the earnings as well. Just wanted to uh, start by asking you about the realizations. Uh, what do you think the realizations could be in the next couple of quarters? And how do you see coal prices move from here? Is it a possibility that you could perhaps achieve that 1600 to 1650 or maybe 1600 to 1700 crores EBITDA target going forward? So 1600, 1650 crore target, which we had given for the renewable energy for the Mitra asset, I Mitra. think and we are absolutely on course of that, that target we gave for FI25, but I think we will be doing much better than that and uh, um, and uh, it, it, it will be uh, achieved much ahead of the schedule. Uh, as regards to the, uh, the power prices, which you talked about, as well as the contribution, uh, the power prices are quite robust given the you know trend of the monsoon what we are having we have never seen that five and a half rupees power prices during the monsoon period and then coal prices have really cooled off now they are in the uh, in a double digit and which gives us a very quite a good robust EBITDA margin and a contribution in in the merchant sales so power demand is also picking up during the July. Now we are seeing five and a half percent power demand growth. And similar was the trend we saw in the month of April also. Of course, um, sorry, uh, similar sure. was the trend month of the, uh, uh, in the June. But April and May due to the unseasonal rains, uh, the power demand really was very bad. And uh, because of that, you saw the power demand growth was only 1% during the last quarter. Okay. I just had a follow-up for this Mitra. Uh, you said 1600 to 1650 crore EBITDA target is on track. Can you tell us what has the impact been of the refinancing interest cost burden? I mean, how much would your interest costs go up by? And uh, what would the debt to EBITDA be uh, going forward? So uh, for our uh, entire portfolio, we have given the guidance that the debt to EBITDA will be in the range of 3.5 to 4 times. And we are, as a company as a whole, at this point of time, uh, is 3.5 times on the operating mm -hmm. asset. And uh, in terms of the, you know, the refinancing cost during the last quarter, there was close to 40, 45 crore rupees impact. And uh, in order to see that the total quarter go gone by, you know, our EBITDA would have been up by at least 110 crores as compared to what we have already shown. So our EBITDA improved by 19% as compared to previous year, same quarter, but it would have been 30% up close to 1,400 and uh, <laughs> odd crores because around 80 crore of the EBITDA, which we are going to recoup in the balance three quarter from the, our hydro and barmere asset, which are on the total PPA, but we had a lower generation and which will be totally recouped. And around 30 odd crore of the EBITDA of Mitra, which was not consolidated on time because of the uh, refinancing of some of the SPVs which we had undertaken. Otherwise, the Mitra EBITDA which we had disclosed at 370 crore was actually 401 crore. Mm. All right. Uh, hi, Mr. Chen. Good morning. So, what will be the steady state finance cost per quarter? As of the last quarter, uh, you know, it was close to 486. As you said, there is some part of which is a one off. So, what is the steady state you're looking at going ahead on a quarterly basis? And also, given that you're doing some acquisitions with the street has read positively, there's no risk, right, from rating agencies with regard to cutting their ratings on the company. You think it's fine? So, two things that our total weighted average uh, interest cost is 8.65% for the entire uh, company as a whole. And similar is for the Mitra asset. So, for example, Mitra, we are having 8,000. 600 odd crore of the total debt and at 8.6 percent so this will be something like uh, around uh, 700 odd crore will be the annualized uh, interest cost on mitra asset and uh, as regards to the rating agencies we had already disclosed our total plan up to fy30 
and wherein we have been talking about that how we are going to maintain our leverage ratios as well as also debt to EBITDA ratios and and uh, and they are absolutely comfortable up to 4.5 times debt EBITDA whereas we are operating at this point of time 3.5 times. Mm. Mr. Jain, hi, good morning. Uh, the other one, the in, uh, in Bharat acquisition, uh, what is the status of that uh, for uh, sort of you know, the, the unit to, uh, which is under construction, uh, unit one, and that, and that entire uh, capacity will be kept for uh, uh, the merchant market, right? So that'll be a big kicker when that uh, all of that comes in. So we opened uh, the turbines post we took over the asset and then we were very positively surprised with the condition of the asset. So we, that's a quite a good positive indicator. Uh, we had planned that the both the units we will be putting into the commissioning between 12 to 18 months time frame, whereas we are now quite optimistic that uh, during the month of September or October, we will be putting first unit into the, um, into the production. And uh, in fact, the current month, the unit is going to be on bar. And, um, and uh, second unit, we are expecting that within the current financial year, we will be commissioning. Of course, both these units, we are going to keep into the merchant market for the time being, because we see that there, there is a quite a big opportunity uh, at this point of time. At some point of time, maybe three, four years later, we will look at to put that onto the long-term PPA. Mm. You, you so there is there is some because you I think unit one was supposed to come on stream uh, was supposed to be operational uh, in the first half right so could this get delayed a little bit more you're saying September October and unit two uh, will get constru fully con the construction will finish this year this financial year no it's the other way around Prashant the uh, first unit <coughs> was supposed to come after twelve months uh, that right. means time in the FY twenty five but uh, and second by October twenty five. But uh, we, because of the condition, it is going to get pre-pawned okay. and we will be doing uh, other way out. Sure. Um, you know, since uh, the entire focus now has moved to the renewable energy space, I want to ask you a little more about that. Last time you alluded to, uh, you know, some amount of value unlocking that you're looking at in your renewable arm, JSW NEO. Any progress on that front and what's the prospects with that arm? So the discussions are on. We are uh, in discussion with some of the strategic investors who are very keen to take a pie into the uh, neo business. But uh, I cannot put any kind of a timeline that when it is going to happen. But at some point of time, there will be a, a, a value unlocking event which we will be undertaking. Oh. All right. Some point there'll be a value unlocking. Okay, we will uh, come back to you later for that. Thanks a lot for joining in uh, and appreciate your thoughts. That's GSW Energy.